بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ور... الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على امور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين دي براس ان سيستر الاسلام توناي ساندي 6th of جمعه الاول 1442 هجري كورسبوندنت تو ذا ساندي اولسو ساندي نايت which is the 20th of December 2020 we will be uh, inshallah starting a book of fiqh called uh, the concise presentation of the fiqh inshallah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish inshallah uh, so inshallah tonight we'll be going through the introduction a little bit about starting the book inshallah uh, this book is a very important book for the beginners people who are uh, people who are beginners because it's so concise and so summarized but sometimes we need some uh, more details and more explanation in the issue when we think it is important. And sometimes you might uh, discuss about the views or different opinions of the ulama because what the, the author, Sheikh, has done was that he, has, uh, he, will, he will take only one view when he, which he thinks that it is the, it is the best or the, the you know, uh, best uh, opinion. So we might discuss this opinion, inshallah, in future, inshallah, when we, see, when we think that uh, there are more right opinion of that, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, teaches us, inshallah. So before we start the kitab tonight, inshallah, we just want to know the reason why we are learning fiqh, or in general, why we are learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why I'm saying that is that a lot of us today, especially young ones, who are unaware of the importance of seeking knowledge, the importance of seeking knowledge. The importance of seeking knowledge is itself a topic that we need to discuss and have a lecture on it, that we cannot uh, do it here tonight. But I will just go through one or two things uh, to remind myself and my brothers and sisters who are listening or watching, inshallah. Seeking knowledge is one of the most important thing in Islam. Seeking knowledge is one of the most important thing in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّرْ فِي الدِّينِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish for him good, he will make him to understand the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the best of everything in this life, in this dunya, is seeking knowledge. And this is وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاء مِرَثُ الْأَنْبِيَاء This is مِرَثُ الْأَنْبِيَاء The inheritance of the Anbiya, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hadith Abid Darda, the beautiful Hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about the person who's seeking knowledge when he said, the one who seeks seek knowledge is the one who is seeking a way to the Jannah, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. So that is, it is the, the general uh, importance of knowledge. But let's come to fiqh itself. Fiqh is an understanding. Fiqh means understanding. And it means understanding the way of doing the worship of worship, worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. To understand how to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's what it means. And to understand how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means you have to take time, you have to, you have to put your time in learning uh, the books of fiqh and the books of hadith, which our scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take them to Jannah. All of our scholars on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today have, they put their effort and all their life to serve us and to bring close to us this beautiful region of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, breaking down all those information for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, in the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's nothing called fiqh. Or in the time of the Sahaba, there was nothing called fiqh. Fiqh came later, after maybe one century or two centuries. Or maybe the second century. That's when the ulama started compiling the books of fiqh, breaking down. You understand? But before it was only nusus, it was only verse from the, the, the Quran, or hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is why they pick it up from those information. The, the, this, 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 this thing is called fiqh today that we are learning in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us so that is the importance of fiqh and the importance of learning fiqh is that your worship will not be accepted unless you know the right way and do you have any excuse for that if someone doesn't know how to pray today or someone who doesn't know how to pay his zakah or someone doesn't know how to fast then it will be obligatory for him to seek knowledge in particular knowledge, in that particular knowledge. So if you're a businessman today, you don't know how to pay your zakah, and you miss your, your, you miss your zakah for two, three years, there's no excuse for you 
before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment, then it will be upon you, obligatory for you to seek knowledge and seek knowledge of zakah. The same thing, all the, you know, ibadat and everything, so. So, <coughs> so seeking knowledge or worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's three conditions or two conditions mainly. One is condition is to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're not a Muslim, you are kafir, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them, is even if you pray, if you go to Hajj, if you go to Mecca, if you pay nafaq, zakah, if you fast, all these things will not be accepted because you're not a Muslim. Because the first condition is that you have to be a believer. The second one is you have to, you have to have sincerity. You have to be sincere during this action itself. Meaning that when you're doing this action, you're doing for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your actions will not be accepted because it is not sincere. It is not, there's no ikhlas. They were not commanded except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So this is the second condition is that you have the sincere. Whatever good you're doing, whatever ibadat you're doing, whatever worship you're doing, then you should have that sincere ikhlas in your heart. If you don't, then that action should not be accepted. And the third one, which is the most important one, is maybe these two first things we understand, but the one, the third one is the most important one also. One of the most important one is ittiba'ul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This worship you are doing, you have to follow the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. Okay? Ittiba'ul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray? Sallu kama ra'ayt muni usalli. Pray as you have seen me, pray. Khudu anni manasikakum. Take from me you are the way to make hajj, your actions of hajj. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the example to follow, is the role model to follow when it comes to ibadat. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهُ لِمَنْ أَقْرَى يعني To the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is your example. So how did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pray? That's the way we pray. How did he fast? That's the way we fast. How did he make ghusl, sha'a? That's the way we did everything when it comes to ibadah. We follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you don't follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then the action will not be accepted. That action becomes bid'ah. It will not be accepted. So these are the things that we need to understand, and it is so important, especially today. Many of, especially young people, many of the Muslims today are and ghaflanin. They are not aware what is going on here. Hardly you see some people coming to the masjid. And seeking knowledge. The masjids are open all the doors, all their doors, all day, all, you know, seven days, all, but hardly you see people coming and seeking knowledge. You understand? If people today, they are mastering their education, they're getting PhDs, they're getting masters, they're getting their diplomas, and that is something good in your dunya, there's no problem with that, and you have this and that, you're seeking knowledge, why don't you do that for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if you ask someone today, what is Arkanul Islam? So what, what is Arkanul Salah? What are the pillars of the salah? What is shurutu salah? Conditions of the salah? What are the nawaqidu salah? You know, what invalidates the salah? You see, most of the Muslims today, they highly, uh, you know, barely know, know nothing about that. Why? What reason makes you not to learn your deen? As we spend, spend time and time, years and years of seeking knowledge of the dunya, from nursery to, you know, PhDs, as we have said, it will... It'll take you maybe 20 years. But when it comes to your deen, which is the most important thing in this dunya, and when it comes to your uh, religion, then you see people who are not ready to learn. And even, even though the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free again, if you come to the masjid, no, you, you will not be asked for anything. Free knowledge. Vast knowledge that you have to pay. This is the real knowledge. This is the perfect knowledge. This is the knowledge of the dunya and akhirah that will benefit Everyone in this, in this dunya and akhirah, really. So I will urge and ask and give advice to my brothers and sisters who are listening here that uh, we have to seek uh, knowledge, the real knowledge, which is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of al-Islam. Uh, of al-Islam. It is so important before time goes because uh, when you are young, you can you can learn, but when you are old, it will be very difficult. But alhamdulillah, knowledge is disposal on, our, on, our, on ourselves today. You, wherever you go, there is knowledge of al-Islam. In you know through the internet, social media, everything. But the real thing is when you want to learn, and when, when to learn is different. If you want to seek knowledge, you have to come to Sheikh. Someone will teach you. You have to come to Sheikh. Someone will teach you. You cannot learn the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from, from the social media. 
or listening to muhadara that is not knowledge that's remind us that you not be confused with that because some of us might be sitting back and watching this which is something very good alhamdulillah and we appreciate for the young people and instead of listening to music and everything that is good alhamdulillah but is that enough it is not enough yeah because we cannot seek knowledge from youtube huh? what's up maybe that's al iman weakest of all iman put yourself forward sacrifice your time and your life as the sahaba did and be someone who's special being appointed and being chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take the uh, you know the responsibility of this deen ahead and you become one of the du'at of islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah of that introduction inshallah we'll be starting the book today inshallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this for you inshallah so the sheikh says Chapter 1, Purity, and this is the normal thing that we see in the books of ulama, scholars, that whenever they want to deal with fiqh, you see them in the beginning of the books, is tahara. Because everything starts from tahara, purity. You understand? Purity. So, hajj, there's purity. Psalm, there's purity. Uh, not zakah, but salah, there's purity. So, it is so important to, us to understand and understand, you know, the purity. So, that's why they begin with purity. So, the sheikh says, Lexically, the word tahara means cleaning and being free from impurity. As a technical term, it means lifting spiritual impurity and removing physical impurity. Yeah, that's tahara. It is lifting yourself from impurity. Nijasa. Cleaning yourself. Okay? Cleaning yourself. Whatever that is necessary, whatever that is, uh, you can get. You can get like water and anything. So that's what's called tahara. Purifying yourself, purifying your body, purifying your clothes, purifying where you are praying. All these things should be purified because as the Prophet says that you know, uh, the salah will not be accepted without purity. So will not be accepted without purity. So the first thing that he starts with after purity, starts with the bab is al-ma, water, water. So he wants you to understand what water means. What water that is pure, what is that not pure. That's what he wants you to understand. What water can you use for yourself to clean your body if you want to have bath or if you want to have wudu or anything? So he says in Arabic, طيب. He says, all water that falls from the sky or comes from the earth is pure. So the water is coming from the heavens, from the sky. It is pure because it is, it is, it is original, it is, it is quality. It, it, is, it is an essence. Okay, so that is, is giving you as a delay that the water comes from the skies, they are pure. Meaning what pure means, that you can make wudu and you can have ghusl. When you're talking about pure, it's not to drink or to take bath, you're talking about in terms of making, purifying yourself. That water is pure, that's what he's saying. لِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً طَهُورًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have sent down purifying water from the sky. So if you see rainwater, is saved somewhere, then you can go and have wudu, or you can have bath with it. That's pure. That's what he's saying. طيب. وَلِقَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي الْبَحْرِ And this is the second one, is this, the water of the sea. وَالطَّهُورُ مَاءُهُ الْحِلُّ مَيْتَتُهُ يعني When he was asked about this, was a question that was put to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم by some of the companions. They said, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّا نَرْكَبُ الْبَحْرَ they said we will go to the sea and we have little water and if we become thirsty we'll drink that water can we make wudu from the sea water from the water of the sea so this was answer the prophet sallallahu he said sallallahu alayhi wasallam it is water it is water is pure and its animals dead animals are permissible so the water of the sea it's pure. You can use. Wash yourself. Make wudu. Have ghusl bath. Janaba. You know, if a woman has got, you know, hide and everything, herself. Then he said, وَهُوَ بَاقٍ عَلَى طَهُورَتِهِ طَهُورِيَتِهِ وَإِنْ خَالَطَهُ شَيْءٌ طَاهِرٌ مَا لَمْ يَخْرُجْ عَنِ طَلَاقِهِ طيب. That's, it remains in a state of purity even if someone pure, if, so if someone pure mixed with it, as long as it is still considered water. And that water is still pure as long as in if it is mixed with a pure substance. Eh? As long as it does not lose its quality. What does that mean? Means 
We have water. That water is mixed with pure substance, like milk. We have water, and it's mixed with milk. Okay? The milk does not change the quality of the water. Still, we can call it water. The quality still remains. Okay? Still is water. And what is the quality? Is the taste, uh, the smell, and the color. So as long as these qualities are there and you have mixed with pure substance and we can call it still water, then you can use that water for to purify yourself. That's what it means. Uh, the Prophet said, for example, the Prophet told the woman who were preparing his daughter for burial, he said, this was his daughter Zainab bin to Muhammad. She passed away and he was giving them guidance how to wash. He was telling them, wash, wash her uh, uh, three times or five times. If you see more than still, you need to wash, wash her. And then he says, the Prophet says, Wash her three, five, or more times as you fit, as you see fit. Wash her with water mixed with lotus leaves and make the last one with kafur or with the same kafur. You know, when someone dies, someone disease dies, and you're washing them with water, at the end they wash it to mix it with some, you know, some, uh, mix it with something, something good smell. It's called kafur and sidr to take, you know, remove the, the everything that is on the body. So this thing that is added to the water, they washed the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kafur and Sid, water is mixed with Kafur and Sid. But the thing here is that water, that Kafur and Sid did not change the quality of the water. That means the still, the water was there. So he's giving, the Shaykh is giving you Dalil for the last one and this one, as long as the water contains its quality, retains its quality as a water, even if a, 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 a pure substance is mixed, Still, that water can be used to purify yourself. That's what he's saying. Then, ولا يحكم بنجاسة الماء وإن وقعت فيه نجاسة إلا إذا تغير بها. Then he comes to the second one. So we have got two types of water. The beginning, one is pure water that is not added in anything. That's not between anything. That is pure. The second one is water that is mixed with pure substance that doesn't change the quality of water. And still, this. Another one which the Sheikh has to discuss here is water that is mixed with pure substance change the quality of the water. Okay? He didn't discuss that here. So if you have got milk and you add into the water, the milk changed the quality of the water. It changed the taste. So there's no more water there now. You can't use, you can't use, we can't call that water. There's no water there. And we can't use that to purify itself. You understand? Because he discussed with pure substance, added to pure substance, the quality remains still of the water. But this one is pure water mixed with pure substance. The qualities change, either the taste or the smell or the, the color. So the, the water is no more there. So that one cannot be used as water because it is out of the context of water. The third one is if water is mixed with impure, impure substance. If the water is mixed with impure substance, like urine, urine or feces or anything that is impure. If you mix that water in the impure substance, if it doesn't change, it is quality, like the smell, or the taste, or the color, then that, that water is still pure. Right? Then he says, وَلَا يُحْكَمُ بِنَجَاسَةِ الْمَاءِ وَإِنْ وَقَعَتْ فِي نَجَاسَةٌ إِلَّا إِذَا تَغَيَّرَ بِهَا Water will not be considered impure even if something impure should mix with it, unless the impurity changes, it is quality. <coughs> yeah. If it doesn't change, still the water is pure. But if it changes, if that water is uh, small or more, you know, and impurity is mixed with that water, and it changes that quality, it changes the smell because of that impurity or the taste or the color, then that water will be classified as uh, impure. That's what he's saying. There. Water will not be considered impure even if something impure should mix with it unless the impurity changes its quality. This is based on the hadith of Sa'ad who narrated, it was said to the message of Allah, shall we make ablution from the well of Buda'a? Naam. Lihadith Abi Sa'adin qala qila ya Rasulullah. They said, oh ya Rasulullah, ana tawadda'u min bi'ri Buda'a. Bi'ri Buda'a is a well that was there. And this well, when the 
when the, when the water, when it rains and the, the water comes, it takes everything, rubbish. It takes uh, the, you know, the blood of women, men, men's, uh, menstrual, uh, women's men's you know, blood. And you should take also the dead body of the dogs and you know, all these things and then it goes into the well when it rains. And the fresh water is still there. So when it's mixed with all these, this impurity, blood and dog's meat and everything that is, you know, smelly. And they ask, Ya Rasulullah, this well, can we make wudu from it? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Al-ma'u tahurun la yunajisu shay. The pure water, there's nothing that changes. So even if you have that impurity into the, to the well, it doesn't change its quality. Because this is a well. Quality. So, what the Shaykh discussed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us in him, is the water, and his water is classified into three, uh, pure water into classified into two, water that is pure itself, pure and purified. It is pure and it can purify. It, the one retains it is quality itself, like rain water, sea water, well, spring, snow, all these waters that are initially from it is essence water. The second is water that is mixed with pure substance, like juice, milk, tea, whatever, any, but it's pure substance. That pure substance does not change the quality of the water. That water can be purified, can, can purify, can be used as water, right? The third category is water mixed with pure substance, but it changed the quality of the water. The, change the quality, it is pure substance, it changed the quality of water. That water is, that, that thing there is no, is, is, is no water. It's not the water now. It has, uh, the quality of water has changed now. That one, it, it, we cannot use it as to purify ourselves. The third one or the fourth one is water that is mixed with impurity. Two different, two divisions. The first one, water that is mixed with impurity, it doesn't change the quality of the water. That water is still, you can use it as wudu and it can purify. The fourth division is water that is mixed with impurity and it changes the quality of the water because of that impurity. That water cannot be used as to purify yourself. So this is the way it's been break, uh, broken down by the Sheikh. And we have uh, finished uh, the Babul Miyah. Inshallah, we'll stop it here, Inshallah. And uh, next week, Inshallah, we'll continue Babul Najasad, Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.